there's much to be done around the the software development and product creation and an entrepreneurship mindset and and in those days this this was 2010 2013 though that range and um we we were lucky enough to discover that there was a huge gap to be filled what's up everybody armand here back with another episode Today's guest, we have Luis Gustavo Flores. He goes by Gustavo, and he's the founder of MovieText. He is from Honduras, and he's actually growing the startup scene over there. It's pretty awesome to hear. He's put on some TEDx events. He's done some hackathons. And for fun, he's working on getting his pilot's license. He just bought a plane, decided to get a license. Super awesome. A lot like what I did with a motorcycle. Uh, fascinating to hear what other countries have going on in the startup world. And I hope you enjoy this episode. I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun talking to Gustavo. Play hard podcast. Work hard, play hard. Work hard, play hard. Work hard, play hard. Work hard, play hard. All right, without further ado... Gustavo, what's up, my man? How is it going today? I'm going great, Armand. Thank you so much for 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 having me on on, on Play Hard Podcast. And for me, it's um it's always a joy to to share you know uh, ideas and and conversations with 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 people that are, that are also creating stuff and doing cool stuff around the world. So yeah, it's fun. It's always a pleasure having a fellow podcast host on the show um, as well. So that's going to be exciting. We can talk about that. For the listeners, we have Luis Gustavo here on the show today. He's the founder of one of the founders of Mobitext, and he was working on Public. It is now no longer a thing, but we'll get into that. And he is, from what I heard on the podcast I was listening to, basically starting up the startup scene in Honduras. So how's it going? What is that like? What is it like the startup scene in Honduras and what is your kind of role in it? Thank you. Um, yeah, well, uh, th- there's been there's been an interesting um, movement around the Honduras start- tech startup scene. Uh, I'm, I'm more of an enabler on on some some areas, but but definitely people that there's some people that had started before before myself with you know with with their companies and with different events i think one of those events brian wong from keep he was there uh around 2008 i was still in my college years i, yeah. I wasn't i wasn't aware of of, of 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 what i wanted to achieve i did did wanted to do create to do something that made a difference but but um on those days startup scene was very limited from at least from the city I'm from, San Pedro Sula. Um, usually, I mean, Honduras has two big cities, Tegucigalpa, the capital city, and then it has San Pedro Sula as a, as a, as a very industrial city and a lot of, yeah. of, of, of commerce going on there uh, around the city and stuff. And Tegucigalpa usually was, um, it, it had a very interesting story as well. There's, there's some guys, um, that actually are based in California, Pasadena. They're called Hello Iconic. And they started this company like 20 years ago, 20 something years ago. And they have evolved and they have grown a team and they have a, 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 a very interesting success story. It will be, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely uh, remind, my, I'll rem- remember to uh, pass you that contact as well so that you can speak with Jorge and Alejandro. Yeah. But anyway, awesome. um, yeah, in the startup scene, this guy's uh, and other guy named Roberto Breve, uh, these guys were pretty much like um, pioneering on, on this stuff and they created events and they were developing startups and ourselves, and I mean ourselves because my friends and I started this company, Public, which uh, we we didn't know anything about technology. We We wanted just to do something around the tech vibe scene and and we didn't have any degree or any masters on 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 computer science or stuff like that so we just decided to uh go ahead and 
and and we found this interesting idea around the SMS advertising, and we just got connected to the idea and we we created the company. And with that, we we started ourselves to to do some initiatives, events, TEDx events, and hackathons events and stuff like that. And that is one of the ways that we started to um, to um, initiate conversations and to organize a, a community of people that, uh, yeah. that already existed on the software uh, scene. But in, in Honduras, definitely there are there's there's much to be done around the the software development and product creation and an entrepreneurship mindset. And, and at those days, this, this was 2010, 2013, though that range. And, um, we, we were lucky enough to discover that there was a huge gap to be filled. So we were really, mm, I see that idea. And that's how pretty much, uh, after that, we, we, through that decision we made of starting this company and learning about it and and having the time because we, we were really fortunate to just be involved on that project for a long time so um that got us a a, a head a head start on on what we wanted to achieve on the tech scene for Honduras and yeah from that uh, a lot of interesting things developed in the meantime once um Movitex was uh, growing and evolving as uh, what is what is now but um pretty much it was a very limited uh proposals for to consume around events and and small gatherings uh to start conversation about it so those were the the early days that I that I remember of of the tech vibe and startup scenes yeah. around the and that's that's really awesome. Yeah, I read that you put on some TEDx events and hackathons. What was what was kind of like that process like and how did that help get you connected within the space? Yeah, um, you know, actually the this event was, 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 was I mean TED represents for me one of one of the key enablers of of for me driving myself to start an entrepreneurship career and startup career or company yeah. creation career. And I remember my first TED talk was uh, one of Jeff Bezos talking about the evolution of technology. Like he was comparing, you know, uh, CDs with the phonographs or the printers with the, you know, he was like relating all these concepts of, of how te technology has helped evolve faster in our times and through that i just got connected to the idea right and we and we used to like <laughs> and on our, on our on our on our office it was a very small office we started it was in kind of like in a, in a garage and we usually had this time for ourselves to watch ted videos and yeah educate ourselves from that and i'm gonna be straight up honest with you man um we were uh, we were on an LSD trip. It was it was really really like in, intense at that moment, and we and we decided to watch TED videos for like eight hours <laughs> <laughs> on an acid trip. Yeah, we it was watch like, TEDx videos, yeah, TEDx videos, and like you know, and like all gain all this knowledge. And we were also very dreamers about the the things that we wanted to accomplish with the yeah. company, and. We always thought, you know what, it would be great if we were able, we'll be able to do a TEDx or to bring TEDx events to our city and, you know, enable conversation. And then all of a sudden we realized that Tegucigalpa was having the first TEDx on Honduras. And we went there and we loved it, man. We were, we, we, we were, we were engaged with it. That was before the asset trip. And then we, we, after that, we, we were in an asset trip and, I just I just said to myself, you know what? If we don't do it, uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna feel I'm I'm gonna feel that I I, I left something out that I had uh, that I was called to do so. Yeah, it was that that feeling of of regret, knowing that if you guys didn't start it or bring it there, 
either uh, someone else would, but way later, or it just wouldn't happen. And exactly. so this was kind of like your your way of saying, I'm that passionate about this. I love this. I can't be the only one. So I'm going to bring it over here. Exactly. Exactly. So that is precisely right what happened, Oman. And I spoke and it was key for me not to do it myself because it's, it, I mean, you don't do things yourself, but yeah. that's, companies don't, don't, don't exist by one person. You need a, a set of people around a team. you, a team that will help you and enable you and support you on your ideas. And fortunately enough, my, my partners at the time, my friends, um, I asked them, Hey, would you be, if, if we decided to bring in, would you help me to do it? Yeah. They were all on board, man. And, and that was the reason why it all, it all started. It started because we wanted to do it and, and, and we felt that it was a good time to do so. And, and that was a very interesting adventure because after that we we realized once we delivered the first event we we were like wow man we were able to do it we we, we did it <laughs> and as as small as it it may have been and when it when it started it was a start and that yeah. got us connected to a lot of things that we were doing with ourselves with our projects and products and, and was we, this before or after you started your first company. It, it, this was in the meantime when we started the company. We had the SMS okay. business running there. It was going fine. It was going good at yeah. the time. So I'm and guessing this was just like a, another set of example, uh, like another example or validation that whatever you guys put your mind to, you can just make it happen. Dude, and that kind of inspired you for the company as well. So right, that is precisely what had happened. We were just that made us realize, hey, if we put our mind to it, it's 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 gonna be done. And, uh, that, I mean, that, that, then brought so many good things, you know, for us as, as, as individuals, as, as a team and a lot of hard lessons to learn from ourselves as well. But, but yeah, like that was the reason and that was the way it started. And, and it was, we have in our podcast, we have a, a small, uh, episode. It isn't, it's a Spanish podcast, but uh, we have a small episode when we talk about that, uh, about how it started. And, and you know, it's, yeah. Uh, very yeah I'll listen to it to uh, keep practicing my Spanish. <laughs> yeah. I definitely, I definitely yeah. got to practice. I like to joke because um, Spanish was actually my first language. I It is what both my parents are immigrants and they knew Spanish more than English when we lived back in Houston and they would just only talk to me in Spanish. And when I moved to San Diego, uh, my teachers were like, I, it was in first grade and my teacher was like, Hey, this kid only knows two sentences in English. You guys got to start talking English in the household. And, uh, my parents switched to English and because I didn't expose myself back to Spanish more, I kind of lost it. So it was like really interesting that I still like, I remember it whenever I'm, I immerse myself in, uh, like Spanish speaking cultures, I can bring it back. But for the most part, I uh, God, dude, I got to practice. So uh, your podcast is a great way. I'll just, Flip on some Duolingo and listen to the listen yeah, to your podcast. Yeah, it's a habit building. It's a habit. It's, exactly. it's a good, it's a habit that you need to build, and definitely, um, that's one of the reasons that I uh, I enjoy having this conversation because we're going to talk about that as well. I, I, I'm looking forward to that as well. But 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 yeah, I mean, um, in in a region in our in in a region and in a country that that usually has lived a a very uh a very hard history yeah regarding, you know very like true. ability and 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 um and uh, growth aspirations uh being able to be part of of movement of people that 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 were enabling opportunities and and, and also uh mindsets to people believe them themselves on doing their things that for me was i mean i could be paid a lot of money for for what i do now and stuff but but being part of that and and and, and knowing that 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 same things those decisions brought us where we are now I think that no money in the world will be able to pay me what that experience paid me. Yeah. 
for my life. And, and I'm grateful for it because, um, see, becoming, entre- you know, developing companies or being an entrepreneur is not an easy thing. And, and, and people, uh, people see it as a tendency nowadays, probably, or, or something like cool to be, but it's not, it's, it's a decision and you have to, you have to be very uh, ready to, to, so I mean, the question that I always try to make to myself is how much are you willing to lose in order to do the, the things that, that you want to do? Hmm. Cause I think losing is a very important thing in life because um, life is a very big part and a winning part is a very small part. So in order to win, I mean, at least for my, in, in my philosophy, I think that losing is a, the acceptance of losing is a very important thing for, for me to build blocks and, and, and convince yeah. us and win. But yeah, I agree because it's losing is not, or failing the way, the way I see it, like something going wrong is, is not an if it's, it's going to happen. Like you're just going to have your ups and downs. There will be downs choosing to ignore that or pretending like they're not going to happen. That is, it's, it's really pain. It's detrimental to your mindset because when it does happen, you're kind of, you're kind of in this mode of, Oh, why did this happen to me? Like, what could I have done? Like, it, it's really helpful to accept the possibility of losing or failure because then it gives you the freedom of, okay, if it does happen, what do I do? Okay, learn from that failure, take it as a lesson and keep moving on. I really liked the analogy that Charles Fry said on, on your episode, how he talks about, um, he grew up on a farm and he grew up farming. And the thing that really stuck out to me is most of the, most of the crops that they plant on farms, they actually chop up uh, and destroy it, and they put it back into the land because that's what helps build the soil. Mm-hmm. And you only take a good small piece of like the, the quality corn, the rest of it gets chopped up, put back in the soil to keep it healthy and keep it growing. And how he said that's very similar to startups, only the, the good ones survive, but a lot of, a lot of the lessons you learn that get chopped up and put back in the soil. That's how the the actual startup community grows. Um, hopefully, Charles, if you listen to this, I'm not butchering the analogy. Uh, go ahead. I'll throw your episode with him in there because he yeah. has just like the most beautiful way of describing and comparing what it's like is that you do need those failures and losses um, to take them as lessons. Now, the other thing I really agree is that if you don't learn from them and if you don't have, like if you kind of ignore your failures, uh, then you are doing yourself uh, a form of self harm because they will repeat themselves, and you're just going to do the same mistake, and it's not helpful. It is, man. And and, and talking about Charles a little bit, um, Charles is it's it's a uh, it's it's a great guy, man. I, yeah, I he's awesome. He's an awesome guest. Yeah, yeah, he he is, and he also he he has that drive, that energy that that communities need nowadays. He he has a company in Honduras. It's a very big company, software company that he has managed to build it. Like uh, with his people, he has managed to lead it and build it. And and having him here in Honduras, uh, it, I, the way I see it, it, is a great opportunity for for a lot of entrepreneurs to to be part of 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 of, of a different mindset. Of a di- there's a huge opportunity that the country has with him as 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 a as a as a, as a as oh i totally agree with his role as a as a as a, a very wise figure w- I think- wise is the right way of, dude i remember interviewing him he had sometimes you speak to people and entrepreneurs who say that they are doing entrepreneuring or like they want to they say they're starting companies they say and like you can kind of tell they're still kind of figuring out he is just someone that struck me as like he had this sense of like calm understanding of like i've done this so many times that like you could go about it this way you could go about that like either just his his advice was some of the most valuable pieces that i've heard yeah he's he's an absolute asset to have in your country and i think that is so awesome that he's building a really big company there indeed he, he, I, I see him as 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 a, as a mentor i have i have several mentors in my life uh you know it's funny that that I don't know the relation that, uh, for example, Honduras with Uruguay has. Uh, 
because what a uh, 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 couple of my mentors are 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 originally from Uruguay, and they have managed to come here to Honduras, and and that also has you know Uruguayans has helped us at, at least in my my story, I've seen how how their knowledge has been useful for entrepreneurs like me to yeah to cope and to just go ahead with things you know and 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 also you know as well as Charles as now because he he's been he has been in Honduras for some time but and the tech scene he has like four years already and, and he has done so much and um yeah it's uh, I think that's really important in a community you know you need people and some some other external views so and entrepreneurs can get a, a better um better conceptualization of of what is that uh, uh an individual like me is following to to accomplish or 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 or, or else or or else other individuals that want to accomplish the same things you know i think it's important that, that you have different combination of ideas and perceptions and and experiences around it so um nowadays andres tech five is it's it's still on a very nascent phase but there are more companies that are growing and and and, and starting to become successful and that is uh, something that community needs you know successful yeah. businesses and one thing i really liked in your episode is that it needs successful companies to stay that that is something that really stuck out um is True. the the people who who get up they start doing well and then they move somewhere else like let's say to the us because of the startup scene that is the the crazy thing to realize was it is a drop in the bucket for the startup scene here, but it is a massive loss for the startup scene in Honduras. Which which is like you you almost need to build a community that that has like an intense amount of pride and says we're not leaving. We want to build it here. We want to grow it here. Wow! Uh, and I find that really insane. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people are gonna make fun of me about because I, I like I, I I'm I'm always I'm always in awe of 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 thoughts and, and words and, 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 and what comes from, from people's ideas and what you just mentioned, what it really, it's true, man. I mean, um, I've, I've always been convinced that I, that I, I my place belongs here. Yeah. Although I, I could have gone other, uh, I mean, other seas and, and, you know, overseas or whatever. And I could have done a lot of things, but, um, you need you, you need to i mean we need to to build that mindset around people they they people need to stay as well and yeah. and it's a very hard challenge for for countries like our like 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 uh, you originally uh from el salvador correct that's uh i was born yeah. here but my dad my dad's from el salvador and my mom's from yeah. mexico yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, it's like so. So, like for example, so right, uh, right. Neighbors. We're neighbors. Exactly. You're pretty much neighbors, and I, I have a lot of Salvadorian roots as well. And and you know, definitely. Let's go. Yeah. Definitely, those countries, you know, have done, uh, have have done a lot with what they have, and they could have done a lot more. But you know, social things and political things uh, that that, that yeah. affects. Uh, you know, a lot of people's mindset, and they decide to leave, and that's really sad for for the country because they lose a, an a valuable asset that could do so many things for the country. But, anyways, uh, I imagine what- also funding. Like you're you you can at some points growth, like depending on the company, of course, but growth can be limited by like the amount of money you can get into this company. Uh, you can only grow so so much without the help of outside money. Again, not always the case, but a lot of times what you see with like these fast tech startups, you do need a lot of funding and like that availability is not always there. And another thing that comes to mind is like when something I really liked in your episode was describing the differences in markets of Latin America, like how Mexico is its own thing, which is very understandable. It's right next to the US and it, it's just like, a, yeah, it's right there and like very populated versus like El Salvador, Honduras, which are Central America, they're like smaller countries and they're right in the middle versus something like Colombia or even Brazil, how he mentioned, those are two different worlds, like entirely. Yet here in the US, you hear it categorized all together under Latin America. Like you hear LATAM, that's all the same thing. It's kind of like it's its own, uh, like they all get grouped together when in reality they're not. They're very separate, different I mean, let's not even go into how different the cultures are, but there's very, very different 
like ways of doing business, very different markets, things that people want. So it, I, I think I see, um, just like predicting, it's, it, this isn't my specialty, just letting you know. But like, okay. I predict that a, a difficulty in getting funding is how, uh, like a lack of understanding of the different types of markets or definitely. like where the money would go. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, you, 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 you struck a nerve there, definitely, because we with with Movitex we had the opportunity to participate on a, on a white combinator process we went to white combinator we we went to the final interview unfortunately we didn't we didn't get in it was unfortunate for the time but it was necessary to, for us to happen yeah and, and that made me realize that the thing is that our region is very small right as if you pile it up together it's not even it's not even it's probably like 30 or 40 percent of mexico's population yeah all of central america i feel like people if you were to see it on a map it's not a big area and it's not a lot of of population like yeah, yeah. totally agree but, you know it's nature it's nature of production of like like the way the capacity of production is so freaking dense that yeah you can oh we work latinos work that's very true exactly it's really dense and like the production of it could be as equal as uh, a, a, an African country that is a bigger country with bigger population, even as a, a as a as a as a country in like Colombia, for example, take that for like let's take coffee for example. Honduras, Honduras, for example, produces like what a third of what Colombia's produce, and it has and it's way smaller than 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 Colombia and has way less population than Colombia, and we still have that capacity to produce one third of what they produce yearly. And that's on a, on a commodity like coffee, right? So the point being with the region is that if, if strategists would be, would, would have a, a, a better sense of understanding that those differentiations, Central America could be in a strategic niche to, to become powerful in a in an area where not so much people can dominate you know yeah i think that I think, has a lot of value yeah i think it takes vision with someone like charles who is like i see a, a ton of potential here not being tapped he is doing doing his thing down there and it is awesome dude like i yeah go to exitos go to exitos is a great company i really like what they're doing and they're really cool to watch i want to keep up with it yeah, yeah, exactly. That that is a great example of of how quick density can become. He started with what ten minus ten people. Now yeah, he's more than a hundred people in four years. That I is, think, I think, part of it though is like so. If the scene is growing a bit slower, I think I think one thing the reason it works very well is because he got so much experience in something like Silicon Valley and and living in Austin, like the really fast, high paced scenes. Like he was a part of that for, like you mentioned, thirty to forty years. So then he takes that experience and brings it down. Like that's that's another thing that has to be kept in mind is like you do need that experience and then bring it back. Exactly, exactly, man. No, and and, and you know it's it's it's. In, in in my case in Mobitex, we we had a very we have we had a very interesting story because we started the company but we were amateurs on doing tech companies and you know um we we read this book about the art of start by guy kawasaki so one of the habits that we have really really will establish in our culture and as, as our individuals we read a lot of books and that that makes you that gives you so much handicap around, you know, around so many people that are focused on things, but they don't read and they don't learn or they don't, they don't have that initiative to, to keep on learning. Right. Yeah. So reading that there was a chapter talk call about find your Morpheus, you know, find a mentor that can help you drive a better idea of a company. And, you know, in Mobitex, we had five years building the company and it was we had two companies we had public and we had mobitex and we had to we had we 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 made, we, we, we made very hard decisions very difficult decisions at the time um one of the partners had to one of the regional partners uh sold his, his shares uh and and fortunately enough he was at the time he was very mature to just you know being cool about it and and yeah not take it to a very complex level 
and and that that was that was part of the story that had to happen for us at the time and we met this guy we met we met our morpheus we met this guy named alfredo he's a uh, he's from he's, he's he's uruguayan he lives in brazil it's a very interesting story the guy but anyways the guy um he's a he's what like it's now probably around the 60s a bit a bit a bit older than 60s but when he, when he when he started the company with us we said you know what this is the guy that we needed to to for us to lead us to understand what we needed what what we needed to be to get done to in order to grow and fortunately enough he was he was there for us all the time and he has been there all the time and 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 we were lucky to build a company around his wise his his knowledge about a, a very specific industry which is sms and and we've managed to start a company to grow it uh to grow it in a way that that has pretty much shown to us that the density that the region has yeah and, and nowadays it's uh we feel proud about about all the things that we have done definitely it's not easy because uh you know we have to that battle of egos and that battle of of of, of exchanges and stuff but in the long run the way i see it at least um I'm grateful that that we managed to get to know. Uh, we life has bring brought us the opportunity to to meet people that care about us and care about the purposes that we had with the company, and and I think that is really important as well. Um, you need a system of people, or 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 fortunately enough to you need lucky uh, the luck to meet people at certain moments that will help you to get that way to, to to get to the dream that you want to achieve and and yeah i didn't want to i i think it was a great opportunity to talk about it because one of the hardest lessons that i have to learn in my life was because i had to i had to deal with someone that was a person that has more experience than i had mm. and a different mindset that i had and at first, man, I didn't want to learn. I yeah, I was stubborn, so I had to reframe all that I knew and restructure this new persona and build new habits around it because I needed to change. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and sometimes it is, it, no. yeah, it is. Uh, I I was recently working on doing i was just looking into generational differences recently um just out of pure curiosity and it was really interesting to see how differently we think to people that are just i don't know 10 20 years older than us and you you do two generations up so like our parents per se uh would be <sighs> Sometimes working with them can be can be very challenging because they think and were raised and do things so wildly differently than we do now. But at the same time, being able to take uh, honestly, it's taken your ego out of it. Being able to take your pride and ego out of that, and being able to listen to what the experience has to say, because at the end of the day, experience don't come cheap, and. Uh, they got it. Like if someone's done it before and they're they're older than us, why not listen? You know. Yeah, but that's me, just uh, yeah. yeah. Listen, man. For me, it was really hard. It is. It, it's. I mean, I'm always gonna be like that. I'm always. I'm always gonna be stubborn. I'm gonna. I'm always yeah. gonna, I'm gonna be rebel. But what I've learned from my mind is that it's okay to be like that. It's okay, but you need to to module those behaviors and those emotions and accept that that there are many different ways of doing things you know and and through that um through that like awakening that i had uh thank god i, I believe in god and that's one of the, one of one of the yeah. habits I, I always try to 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 work on um I realized I need to do something different in my life. I need to somehow switch my my wiring and start having start to lose that um, 
that complex, uh, that that like that feeling of 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 of, of being the dumb person at the uh, you know looking dumb on the things that I start, you know. Yeah. So out of nowhere, I I met a friend, a very good friend of mine, that now he's a, was one of my best friends now, and he introduced me to the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu discipline. I was originally always a soccer player. I loved soccer for my whole life. I played in many places around the world and I loved it. But I realized, whoa, I mean, that 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 is something different. And I, I, I really need to get my hands into that. To yeah. know, you know, and that was perhaps that was one of the key decisions of 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 myself to start trying even uh, newer things for my life and jujitsu is awesome i love jujitsu i was uh, something brazilian jujitsu actually something i was doing for i can't remember when it was a couple years ago but the thing i loved most about it is that it's like you're solving a puzzle but with your body like you're you're fighting against another person and you're constantly you're you're like solving a puzzle while playing chess but with while wrestling at the same time like you're you're constantly trying to like think what moves are they going to put on you and then counter that while also doing something of yourself uh but at the same time you're it like the puzzle part comes when you're in a tough situation when they they like got you pinned and you're like all right there's a way I can get out of this but I need to figure out how and uh, the puzzle's constantly moving. Um, what is what is your experience with jujitsu? That's pretty awesome. You said you're a blue belt um, earlier. You told me that's pretty yeah. sick, dude. Yeah, yeah. I started four years ago, um, and yeah, the way it got to me was really crazy. It was because you know this guy just because I've, I've I've been there always near the near the jujitsu scene because in my office where we used to have our offices. Like in the next door, I had a jujitsu school, but I I, I I was never interested to joining until yeah my this guy just like I don't know he told me something that I just really I, like like I, I got I said to myself you know what yeah let's just try it and it's just sometimes it just works like that you just gotta show up yeah you just be you there. gotta try it yeah one time one day at a time one day at a time one day at a time and. Something really strange in my mind was was starting to happen. Like I was just like, okay, yeah, I'm doing it because I like it, and and it's bringing me something different. So keep keep on keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Doesn't matter if you don't learn if you're a slow learner. Doesn't matter if you're dumb. Doesn't matter. Just doesn't matter going. if someone half your weight keeps putting you in an arm bar. Exactly. Keep doesn't on going. Matter. Keep keep be keep be graceful. Be grateful for the fact that you're able to train and whatever, yeah. you know. And and yeah, it became became like a. I almost quit it for when I was like ten months there, and then my 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 um my sensei or my master, the the the, the professor that that, yeah. that that gives the lessons, he spoke with me and told me like, you have a purpose with this, so you need to find your way out of this and get back to mats. And I I came back, but I was at the time I was I was drinking alcohol and and then like a couple of months later that I started jujitsu again. I had this very hard experience with myself. And from that experience that I had, I quit drinking. I hmm. I'm I'm I I have three years now, no drinking. Three now. years sober. Yeah. Congrats, damn. That's Thank a that's a long time. Yeah, it's uh it's getting there. It's it's you know living it up like as 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 a jujitsu thing, like day by day. So did and, you use jujitsu as a as a replacement for? Because I I feel like all like bad habits you can find a positive replacement. Has this been kind of like your um support for being sober has been through jujitsu well at the beginning it was it was and then i i follow a, a 12 step, a 12 step program hmm. so and my parents uh they're 12 step program protection practitioners 
they you have no idea man they 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 begged me like they they told me like in many different ways please just go just try yeah. it out and i and i didn't i i did not want to do it but the day that i decided to that i wanted to do it i wanted to do it the the, the next day you know and i was speaking with my mom and my yeah. mom was like why why you have to wait for the next day do it today and she was right about it and i was like wow yeah right and and after that my support system was a bit uh, was um stretching a little bit cuz i had my jiu jitsu i had my 12 step program and i then learned to uh meditate and 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 meditation became it is a very integral part of myself nowadays. Yeah. It, I have to meditate at least 10 minutes or 11 minutes a day. I, I have it. I mean, I, I have my app. I, 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 Do you no notice joke. the days you don't? Oh, yeah. I notice the days I don't. I, I notice that. Yeah. I feel and, like that's me with journaling. Anytime, like the days I don't, I, it's very present in my, in my thoughts in like my head. Cause I feel like I just have to get it out on paper so that I can kind of like clean, clean the brain, come up with new things. And when I don't, it's like the same thoughts just keep repeating. And I see meditate, meditating is something that I wish I would do better. It's something that I've def I've been doing on and off since early high school, I think. So it's been a while, uh, but I haven't been the most consistent with it yet. The times I notice when I am really consistent, it's, um, it's magical. It, yeah, it's magic. It really is. Like <laughs> no, no. The funny no. thing is, like, it's it, you, people think people think you you hear it in the West. You hear it's it's like some sort of uh, superpower. People think like it's really weird. It's got this like interesting connotation that it'll you'll your brain will just start working much better. And all, dude, I've noticed all it is is that it's not that your brain works better. I mean, it does. It does work better when you meditate, but it. It works better because you're more comfortable inside silence. Like think about think about how often we don't have silence. Like think about how have if you've ever been to a restaurant and just like eaten by yourself. Th think about that and how few people actually just take a second to think to to like mindfully eat. Most people like what I want to do when I think about this is pull out my phone and start watching videos or like scroll through social media while eating. Like being comfortable in that silence is one of the most important things that you can do for yourself. Exactly. That, that's a, that's a way of you say, telling yourself that you love, you love yourself. Yeah. I didn't realize Armand, to be honest, man, I was like, all the harm that I made to myself, all the things that, and I thought that I had a good self-esteem and I, and I didn't, man. I actually didn't. I, 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 and I didn't love myself. I didn't love the people around me. And, and, and that is a very sad truth that I had to deal with, you know, and through meditation, it's pretty much like the same time I started, I stopped drinking at a, at a June 7th of, of, of 2019. Damn, you got it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know. Oh, I know. dude, you had you probably had quite the uh, the battle during the pandemic because I feel like that's when everyone just reached for the bottle and anything else they could. Um, and, and you you went clean the whole time. It was it wasn't that hard for me, and for, unfortunately, no, it was not that hard for me. Nice. And and then I started meditating around September, like like between September final of September and, and, and early October, but it was not as constant as when I started to meditate around the 27th of October through there. I started like all time, like uh, probably I've missed uh, like less than a hundred times I've missed meditating in the, like the past three years, you know, and, and it inspired to me. I'm going to meditate after this. Trust me, it, I don't know, man. I, I, at the beginning, like everything you start, at the beginning, you're like, what is this? What yeah, do? yeah that's a big one is the why Why am I here? That's what, yeah. <laughs> you keep you keep asking, you're like, what am I, what am I doing here? Why, why am I doing this? That's yeah. like the, the, the thought that repeats itself a lot. Yeah, yeah, man. And, and, and you know, um, I just, 
kept being constant. And actually what did help me a lot on the pandemic, I had my longest streak on, 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 on meditation was 145 days. Hmm. And then like, you had a much healthier pandemic than I did. <laughs> I, exactly. I was, I was trying to just, you know, yeah. get, get, I, w- I was trying to make my problems smaller. It was like I, my longest I, drinking streak, bro. It was the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man. I mean, yeah. I, and, and, and it's pro- and, and, like your case, there were a lot of people that got into that, you know, like yeah. got into that behavior. It's, it is what it is. You know, people has their own way. Dude, I'm of- very thankful for that, for that whole lockdown experience because out of that came a lot of self-reflection and uh, quite honestly purpose. I kind of found what I wanted to do and and started working towards it really through the pandemic. But it was ha- having to go through those first few months of like, I'm an incredibly extroverted. Having to go through those first few months just stripped away of my um, like social interaction. It was you, there's a lot of talk about introspection and like meditating in silence, dude. There was a lot of looking at yourself and looking inward. But um, I am really glad that I, I managed to do the work at that time because I, I I don't think I'd be where I am today right now if had I not um, had I not gone through the pandemic. Damn, I'm I'm actually glad that you've done it because that's that is one of the reasons why I'm here as well. You know, because um yeah, you know, it's it's just strange how how things work around around uh, around humanity. You know, and 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 yeah, meditation did help me a lot on 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 understanding. Cause I know, I know that I, I know my flaws. I know my my defects, and I realize that I'm always gonna be that way. And there's no way that I'm gonna cut that. It's impossible. It's it's what I am, right? But what I managed to learn, at least, is to okay deal with it in a better, not in a better, in a different way. Yeah, I do get my mistakes always. I, I'm 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 no I'm far from perfect. I'm. I have a lot of things to work on myself, but having that moment for myself and just realize, okay, you're, you're here. You're okay. You're, here's those are the thoughts that are happening to you. And it's always there. How eventually, you know, magic happens by itself. Yeah. Just by doing it, you know, boom, things started to pop up. Things start are starting to pop up better you probably, I mean, my jujitsu got a bit, a bit better. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. I'm. There's people. I mean, there are a lot of. Oh, I've seen. That, yeah. That, that are obsessive with that. I'm, I'm okay with just practicing the way I'm practicing. I should practice a bit more, and it's something that I need to learn better. But then you know, ah, life- we should all, we all should be doing things more. That's just life, man. But exactly. speaking of of magic, I want to talk about you flying for a little bit. Yeah, uh, you're you're getting your private pilot's license. How has that been? Yeah, it, 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 it's it's really connected to the to the things you know by jujitsu, yeah. you know, and, and and the meditation, and you know, same friend that actually got me into jujitsu. He, I don't know for for what reasons we were talking about planes at the moment. I never dreamt of being you know yeah, pilot or anything, but That's so sick, dude. Exactly, and and, and 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 I don't know, man. He just like showed me this, um, this planes like like this very small planes, and then I checked the price, and I was like, "What?" I thought a plane was like hell expensive, you know. And it, yeah, and it, like I can, I can get one of those. Yeah, I was like, I was like, "Whoa, this is something crazy to do." <laughs> That's so and, cool. And, and, and yeah, and, and you know, my mind worked and, and you know, yeah. if you're aware of it, it was like a year ago. It was like in June of year, like something between May or June of last year. And I was like, I told my dad, I was like, dad, you know what? I got this itch, man. I gotta, I gotta learn how to fly a plane. And he's like, looking at me like, you know, I mean, are, are you serious? Are you, are you seriously considering? I was like, yeah. He's like, no balls. You won't. <laughs> yeah. He's like, like, like. He, he like he like in the in a way that he, like, he he knows me he's like hmm he probably will but I'm not sure I'm not sure if he actually will but he yeah. might do it right you're like he's got it in him but it's a plane <laughs> like this yeah. isn't just it's funny it's funny yeah. it's funny and not like, not in the same I mean it's not nearly as 
um, like on the same expense or honestly danger side, but I, I got a motorcycle and it was very much in the sense of, that's actually it's, what I talked to, to Charles about. Um, cause he, he rides motorcycles. His story with that is pretty sweet, but one, um, to me, it was very much like I got that itch and I checked the prices and I was like, I can get one of those. <laughs> And then, exactly. and then I went to go look at them, and then a few days later, my parents were like, "Dude, what? what? Yeah, it is, and it is so. You're like, I mean, where are you gonna put you this? So you feel so fulfilled, you know? Because- yeah, yes, you really do. It's like it's one of those follow your not dreams, not whims. It's not like not impulse, but like what you feel will make you happy. Like what you your sense of adventure is being. Uh, fulfilled. Like I'm sure when you're in the air, it's the same as like me, you know, flying down the freeway. You just feel this sense of like freedom that very few people actually get to experience or get to feel. So it's, it's a really great, it's a really great, um, just like expression, just expression of yourself and happiness. Totally, totally with you there, Armand, you know? Um, so I just, what, before we started, uh, before I started the, the, the 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 pilot journey or the the pilot lessons journey we decided to go to to tampa and 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 we said you know what we're going to try this plane and if we if we feel that it works then we do it yeah i did i I actually i didn't i didn't need that i was convinced i was convinced (laughs) that I, I, i wanted to do it but i wanted to in your head you went in going i'm buying this either way Exactly. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it no matter what I'm going to do it. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, I, I tried it and I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. And in December of last year, I started my, my private, my theorics for, for private uh, yeah. pilot. Now, right now, um, I mean, my journey, I'm, I'm a lot of hours ahead to become a private pilot, a licensed private pilot, yeah. but I'm expecting that by around March or April of next year, I'm gonna have my 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 license, and I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be able to just you know enjoy a, a new skill. And, and yeah, that's sweet. You, so you spent a good bit of time in the air already. Yeah, I've spent around eight point three hours. Nice. That's like the way they they count it. They ca- and, yeah yeah, and um, and I got through that because because of. The, Remember the, the the things that I needed to change. Those things like my recovery, my jujitsu, my parents, my my friends, my wife, my the the, the, the all the surround system that I yeah. that I'm supporting myself with, just uh facilitated me to just you know what you can do it. Yeah, it feels like you've done a good job cultivating the right environment around your life because when when you see your friends like they're the ones that helped you put on this tedx event they're they're the ones that are helping you with the be a co-founder you have your parents and your wife who are your so your family that are helping you become a better person you have your mentor like you you've done a really great job of of putting people in your life that uh bring you in a more positive and better direction yeah yeah and i think you know definitely what meditation has taught me is that I mean, like, if you if you let your mind just wonder, usually, and, and that this is from a podcast that I li- listened from 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 Lex Friedman with with Sam Harris. <laughs> Sam Harris was telling me about like the mind can be very negative. Like, if you wake up, you're not yeah, it can waking up. You know, you need to train yourself to. You need to train your brain to always be positive not always but i mean like to cultivate that positive mindset because things are gonna get hard you know the mind only understands problem and how to solve them they don't understand like the optimism or the the good power of what what you want to accomplish they are just they just understand what what they like the brain understands that thing that can interpret you know and i think that having this conversation with you it's very positive for me it it, 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 it also helps I'm my glad. yeah it helps my recovery it helps it helps me to solidify the things that i believe and the responsibility to have with myself which is the most important thing responsibility with yourself 
which have done so much harm as well. <laughs> but we all do. Exactly. And and and, and I feel okay with it, man. I, I embrace it. I, I feel that that yeah. it is it is my life's journey to live. And and um I'm really thankful for it. I, I feel nowadays I feel thankful for it. I feel thankful for the people that help me learn the hard lessons and help me also the the people that were there were nice enough to help me when I needed the most help. Yeah. You know? And Thank- mm-hmm. I was going to say, and I'm thankful you came on. This has been a great episode. Man, thank you, thank you, thank you as well, Armand. I mean, I mean this is a this is a Charles connection, you know. Yeah. He sent us yeah. that mail, and we thought, you know, uh, yeah, you guys need to meet. And I'm like, yeah, sure, let's do it, man. I like it. I, I like that idea. And 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 I let and and I, and obviously you were also connected to it, and you were immediately connected. We have to talk. Let's talk someday. And, and here we are, man, here we are learning. Yeah. I don't like to, I don't like to wait around with those kinds of things. I will admit one of my things, if anyone listening will laugh at this, maybe I could be a lot better about replying. I could, but, uh, I do, I do my best to, to jump on opportunities right away. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know what it is, dude. I, I I like reply in my head and then, and then I'm like, that's what I'm going to say. And then need to just message it. But yeah, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, I have a couple of closing questions and then we can be on our merry way. Uh, what kind of music or podcasts have you been listening to lately? Uh, I, I like a lot um, Hernan Catania. I, I like him. It's a, a electronic music. There's a like a, always a new set on every Sunday. So I, I, I like to listen to that. Uh, I I usually be, uh, uh, listen to reggaeton as well and some, some other. Uh, I like nice. a lot of music, you know, yeah. as well focusing and podcast my favorite podcast whole world is besides lex your own lex uh, what i said besides your own uh yeah exactly i love my podcast lex yeah, friedman yeah, yeah. Lex friedman, lex friedman. Well, it's, I, I really admire what he has what he does what like the, t- the type of interviews he he does as well i also like your podcast man i think that you're doing a great Thanks. job and, and i appreciate it's that very and, it, it, and I like that it's a topic that is involved. It has to do with the self, you know. Yeah. And uh, and, and 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 I I appreciate the, the the contribution you're also you're also doing. But um, yeah, those are the podcasts I've been listening. My 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 podcast and my 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 shows, and uh, some other uh, uh, um, Gimlet shows as well. Startup. Uh, yeah. Gimlet, you know, pretty pretty cool as well. And um, yeah, those are the things that I've been listening lately. Yeah, thanks for thanks for throwing mine in there. I do I do my best on combining the the things I really like and am interested in while also trying to help people out at the same time. Um what are what are your favorite TV shows or movies that you would like to recommend? Favorite TV shows, movie. Well, I don't know why, man, but I don't know why this like this South American culture like that Uruguayan and Argentinian culture. I like a lot of Argentinian culture. I recently saw the uh, Carlos Bilardo uh, documentary that's an HBO Bilardo. Hmm. Like I like that story. I think it's a very inspirational story. Um, yeah, I, I really like Maradona's uh, as well documentary. Uh, the last the, the did last you movie. did you see the Maradona show when he coaches a team in Mexico? Uh, I I I. I I, I I mean there's the, the documentary is there in, in Netflix. I haven't Dude, seen that it. That is one of the best show. He, he Maradona just like coaches uh, a like second rate like whatever is below the the number one team league like the second league team in Sinaloa and it is so funny, dude. Maradona is an awesome character. Like you think you think it's some like guy playing someone but it's this it's one of the greatest soccer players to live that's just also a, an electric person to watch on tv like it so is, funny such a is. good show i my family yeah. would gather together and just watch the show is so good so i recommend that yeah. there's no awesome i mean thank you for that as well i, I, I will i will i will watch that actually um there's this documentary about uruguay when they came uh world cup world cup champions in the 30s it was, you know, it's insane. They were like a unbeatable team, like for ten years, from the twenties to the thirties of of last uh, of last century. 
but they were insanely great. They were undefeated until they lost on like 24 years later, you know, and they were, they were insanely great. And they talk about like the, like this Capitan, um, I, was his, I think it's a Negro Medina. I think it's his last name. Obdulio Medina, something like that is his name. Um, they talk about their story. And it, I, I, like, I like it. I like like that scenery of, of people becoming great and how they became great. I like yeah. that. Um, oh, you'll series. love Last Dance if you've ever seen that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. Last Dance is one of the no-brainer. You got, yeah, you got to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that as well. Um, <laughs> I like, um, you know, I was very drawn to the series Euphoria. Hmm. I haven't seen that yet. I hear a lot about it. I haven't seen it yet. It I is, I do want to watch it honestly, but I I hear it's pretty nuts. It is crazy, Armand, because like I think in the context that we both grew up, like you know, the, the idea of being in high school and like partying and like the booze and stuff like that. I think Euphoria shows like a really intense, yeah, culture around that. Yeah, different things there, like a lot of mental illness around there and 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 addiction problems and like i was really mind blown by that and yeah my favorite movie all time clockwork orange definitely yeah. uh, must recommend it and yeah i mean i like i like i like pink floyd uh pink floyd uh as a music as well pink floyd uh, as a band what about uh, any books any books you're reading there's uh, uh the books currently i'm i'm reading i'm going to show you real quick i'm 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 reading this one called make noise Make so that's noise. For podcasting. That's oh, for podcasting. I gotta check that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the about, podcast. Like, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're how doing how here. Course, yeah, how to create um how to create audience. I'm learning this about about fintechs as well, banks and fintechs. That's the reason nice. that I recently have started. Would definitely recommend also this one. Uh the um what you do is what you, you do are. is who you are. Um Ben Horowitz. It's about culture okay. yeah. and, 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 and for companies. Uh, recently I read also this one, Winners Never Cheat from, um, uh, I think it's a uh, Huntsman, the last name. I think it's, yeah, John Huntsman. So yeah, man, um, those got are a lot the, of books, a lot of books. On yeah. The yeah. I, I love reading. I, I love, I love to cultivate my knowledge. So yeah, yeah those are the things. Sweet. That, uh, mm -hmm. Last question is yeah. where can people find you? Uh, definitely LinkedIn. That's the only network that I have. I don't have Facebook and I have Twitter, Instagram. Gustavo uh, replies. I replies really well. I need to start being like him when it comes to replying. He he will <laughs> reply to your messages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, you can reach out on LinkedIn. Um, you can follow uh, Medios Modernos, the podcast company that I have. Uh, that we have free shows there. We can you can follow them by Spotify or Apple Podcast, and um. Yeah, I think and it, fundamentals. Like, fundamentals, correct? That's one yeah, of the. That's one of the podcasts. That was the podcast yeah. that you have. I'll definitely yeah. I'll, I'll throw the episode with um, oh. Charles on there. Yeah, because yeah. I I really loved it. I was it was great to listen to. I learned so much from that episode. He's yeah, just okay. such an insightful guy. Yeah, it is, man. Thank you, thank you for listening as well. And um, yeah, I think if you you can you can you can you can put my notes in my in my personal email. Yeah, I can I can send it to you by by LinkedIn and. And yeah, you, people interested in reaching me, you can reach me by there. And um, yeah, those are the ways that you can reach me. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks for coming on, Gustavo. It was great having you. Thank and you, It was man. a great conversation. Thank you, Thank you for the conversation. Awesome conversation. Awesome hosts. And uh, awesome Play Hard podcast. So please follow. Please uh, listen to Armand and, 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 and his guests. Uh, you, you, have, you will definitely learn a lot from, from, from our conversations. Appreciate it. See you later, man. All right, bye-bye.